Sirius Black, also known as Padfoot, was a pureblood wizard and the heir to the House of Black. He attended Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry from 1971 to 1978. He defied tradition by being the first of his family to be sorted into Gryffindor House instead of the accustomed Slytherin. This is the life of Sirius Black. Before we start, I'd like to take a brief moment to thank the sponsor for today's video and that's Amino and their fantastic team. Everyone, Amino is an app that powers over a million different communities, including, you have guessed it correctly, Harry Potter. The Harry Potter Amino app is packed full of unbelievably cool features that you can enjoy along with me, like public chat forums linked to your Hogwarts house, make sure to catch me in the Slytherin chat room. Really fun quizzes like this one here, cleverly titled The Truth and Lies of Gellert Grindelwald, and also the beautiful and stunning fan art that so many amazing artists provide, and that photo of Gellert itself is actually a perfect example. As many of you know, fan art is such an important part of my videos, and there's also featured posts with some incredible pieces of writing and really fun polls that you can take, especially the poll on my Harry Potter Amino page, because for the first time ever, my next YouTube video will be decided by all of you through my Harry Potter Amino page. So download the app from the link in the description, follow me, Harry Potter Folklore, and have your say. So who will it be? Is it going to be the life of Pomona Sprout? Or is it going to be the life of Peter Pettigrew? You can only decide by joining me in the Harry Potter Amino community. And in addition to that, I'm going to be doing an hour long Q&A exclusively for Amino that you don't want to miss as I'll also be making a very interesting announcement. So thanks again to Amino for sponsoring the video and now please enjoy the life of Sirius Black. Sirius was born into the House of Black, a once notable pure blood wizarding family. His parents, Orion and Walburga, were both Blacks by birth and second cousins. Sirius had a younger brother, Regulus, who died after turning against Lord Voldemort in 1979 by attempting to destroy one of his Horcruxes. Sirius did not share a close relationship with his brother, calling him a better son than himself, as Regulus adhered more to the family traditions and beliefs. Sirius is a traditional black family name, recurring in at least three generations and following a family tradition of naming children after stars, constellations and galaxies. The black family believed strongly in pure blood elitism. They refused to consort with muggles or muggle-borns, squibs and blood traitors, and even disowned squib family members, such as Sirius' great-uncle Marius Black, and insisted that their family members only marry within respectable pure blood classes. Because of these beliefs, they were forced to marry their own cousins. They also held the dark arts in reverence. Sirius rejected these values, leading to conflict within his family. He even put permanent sticking charms on Gryffindor banners, as well as pictures of muggle girls in bikinis and motorcycles, and a picture of himself and his Gryffindor friends on the wall of his room to emphasize his differences from the family and also to annoy his parents. When his cousins Bellatrix and Narcissa made the desirable pureblood marriages to Rodolphus Lestrange and Lucius Malfoy respectively, Sirius held them in contempt. His favourite cousin Andromeda was disowned by the family as a blood traitor when she married Ted Tonks, a muggle-born wizard. Sirius would later share this same designation and was held in despisement, even hatred, by some members of his family. However, in his later life, he established friendships with his first cousin once removed, Nymphadora Tonks, as well as his godson Harry Potter, whom he loved as a son, and Harry's best friends, Hermione Granger and Ron Weasley, his third cousin, and his distant cousins in the Weasley family also. Sirius had an unhappy childhood. By adolescence, he had come to hate most of his relatives, in particular his mother, Walburga, and his cousin, Bellatrix Black. Whereas all other members of the Black family were sorted into Slytherin, Sirius, however, was placed into Gryffindor during his sorting in 1971, showing that his views had already diverged from those of the rest of his family before he came to school. Honouring any Muggle accomplishments in general annoyed his family, but none so much angered his mother than when Sirius considered Muggle women attractive. By contrast, he greatly enjoyed life at Hogwarts, where he was inseparable from his best friends, James Potter, Remus Lupin and Peter Pettigrew. 
They later discovered that Remus Lupin was a werewolf, and to support him, Sirius, James and Peter secretly and illegally became animagi. This allowed them to safely accompany Remus during his transformations and keep him under control. Sirius' form took the shape of a huge black dog, not unlike the Grimm, from which his nickname Padfoot was derived. James would become a stag, prongs, and Peter would become a rat, wormtail. The four friends called themselves the Marauders and used the nicknames Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot and Prongs. Padfoot, Prongs and Wormtail came from their three Animagus forms, however Mooney for Remus came after his lycanthropic condition. The boys also created the Marauders map, which allowed them to see where everyone in the castle was at a given time, which made sneaking around and avoiding teachers much easier. Although he later considered himself an idiot during his time, Sirius, along with James, were immensely popular. Teachers respected his intelligence, though not his behaviour, and girls adored his dark, handsome looks. His especially rebellious attitude made him ignore them, therefore making girls fawn over his bad boy attitude, as well as his looks, even more. Many teachers regarded him and James as troublemakers or practical jokers. Hagrid once compared them to the mischievous twins Fred and George Weasley, saying that the twins could give them a run for their money. Serious popularity was not universal however. A mutual hatred sprang up between James Potter and Severus Snape. Sirius being James' best friend, actively supported him, leading to Snape bestowing an equal and lifelong grudge upon Sirius, and this grudge resulted in Snape's actual happiness after Sirius' death. Sirius later claimed that Snape was this little oddball who was up to his eyes in dark magic, from Snape's first moment at Hogwarts. He was just one of the many people who greatly disliked Snape. Sirius and James often went out of their way just to bully him, while watching one of Snape's memories in the Ponceve, Harry saw Sirius and James physically bully him simply out of boredom. Sirius attempted to justify this by pointing out that he and James were only 15 at the time, to which Harry hotly replied, I'm 15. Though Sirius did admit that he and James were arrogant little burks and that he was not proud of his behaviour but had done nothing to really rectify it. He and James eventually ended their campaign of ill treatment towards Snape, but they apparently never apologised. The only time James ever stopped was in front of Lily Evans, a pretty redhead woman who James later married straight out of Hogwarts. Early on in his Hogwarts years, Sirius played a potentially lethal practical joke on Snape. He informed Severus of how to enter a tunnel under the Whomping Willow that would lead to the Shrieking Shack, where, unknown to Snape, Remus Lupin was confined during his transformations into a werewolf. Snape went there during a full moon, and James was forced to rescue him. Sirius excused his own actions, explaining that he had simply told Snape what he wanted to know about the tunnel, while omitting crucial information. He simultaneously claimed it served Snape right. The resentment Snape felt for Sirius was never healed. Snape was not the only student whom Sirius and James tormented during their years at Hogwarts. At the age of 16, Sirius finally broke away from his family and took refuge with James Potter and his parents. The Potters generously adopted Sirius as a son. His outraged mother blasted his name off the family tree, as was tradition for those who did not support the family's supremacist ideology. Sirius' uncle Alfred, Walburga's brother, sympathised with his young nephew and left him a large inheritance, most likely causing Walburga to blast Alfred's name off the family tree as well. Sirius was therefore left financially independent by his uncle's generous bequest and eventually got a place of his own. After leaving school, Sirius fought against Lord Voldemort, eventually joining the Order of the Phoenix. Around 1977, he and James were involved in a motorbike chase with two policemen. Although the chase started off as a bit of fun, it turned slightly more serious when the pair were attacked by three men on broomsticks. Sirius and James both used their wands to raise the police car that had been chasing them and their attackers crashed straight into it. It is unknown whether they got into trouble with the Ministry of Magic. Sometime in 1979, Sirius' father and brother both died. Orion's death was from an unknown cause, 
while Regulus' death occurred when he was dragged to his death by the Inferi while trying to destroy the Locket Horcrux, although Sirius never learned the details of his fate. He remained the best of friends with James and attended James's wedding to Lily Evans as best man. When their son Harry was born, James and Lily named Sirius Godfather, thus designating him as Harry's guardian in the event of their deaths. He also gave Harry his first broom at the age of one as a birthday present, as stated by Lily in a letter found by Harry a number of years later. After joining the Order of the Phoenix, Sirius found himself rolling with mistrust and stress due to the great terror that was Lord Voldemort. It took its toll on him greatly. By October 1981, he no longer trusted his old friend Remus Lupin, suspecting he was a spy and excluding him from important information. However, he trusted Peter Pettigrew implicitly, a decision he would grow to regret for the rest of his life. In 1981, the Potters were aware that Harry, along with the son of fellow Order members Alice and Frank Longbottom, had become Lord Voldemort's specific targets. Albus Dumbledore advised the Potters to go into hiding using the Fidelis charm, which Dumbledore hoped would conceal them from doom. James was adamant about Sirius being their secret keeper, believing that Sirius would willingly die than rather reveal where they were. However, believing that Voldemort would immediately suspect him, Sirius suggested Peter Pettigrew as a less obvious choice. Keeping everyone else, including Remus Lupin and Albus Dumbledore in the dark, Sirius and the Potters reassigned Pettigrew to be the secret keeper with Sirius himself as a decoy. On Halloween night 1981, Sirius went to Pettigrew's hiding place and found him missing. Unsettled by the lack of signs of a struggle, Sirius frantically sped to Godric's Hollow, discovering the Potter's house destroyed and his friends dead. Only baby Harry was still alive. When Rubius Hagrid appeared on the scene to take Harry from him on Dumbledore's orders, Sirius offered to take Harry himself as he was the chosen guardian in the event of James and Lily's death. However, Hagrid had told him that Dumbledore had made arrangements to send Harry to Lily's sister Petunia. Sirius conceded after an argument and gave Hagrid his flying motorcycle, telling him that he wouldn't need it. Nevertheless, after Hagrid had handed over the baby, he did intend to return Black his bike back, but he never got the chance. After leaving Godric's Hollow, Sirius, overcome with grief and rage, tracked Pettigrew down, determined to kill him in vengeance. However, Pettigrew outwitted Black. Confronted by Sirius on a city street, he shouted out that it was Sirius who betrayed the Potters and then created a huge explosion on the street with a powerful blasting curse, killing 12 muggles in the process and enabling him to fake his own death and escape in his animagus form, leaving a severed finger behind as evidence. The surviving muggles who witnessed the event were pretty certain that they saw Sirius murder the 12 companions and Pettigrew with the curse and Fudge even claimed to have seen Sirius laughing manically at the scene of the crime, suggesting that he thought Peter accidentally killed himself and found joy from that. Sirius was arrested by the Department of Magical Law Enforcement and sentenced to life imprisonment in Azkaban without a trial for mass murder using the blasting curse, giving the information about the Potter's whereabouts which ultimately led to their death and service to Lord Voldemort. The surviving muggles were obliviated. Pettigrew was unjustly awarded the Order of Merlin First Class for his confrontation with Sirius, which along with the finger that they recovered, were posthumously given to his mother. As the time passed, due to many misconceptions, many believed that Black drew his wand and killed Pettigrew before the other even had a chance of drawing. Even the other remaining marauder, Remus Lupin, believed it was Sirius who betrayed their brotherhood. Marked as Prisoner Pioro Elhaz 390, which is the actual pronunciation of the two runic letters on his prisoner number, Sirius was placed in solitary confinement at the mercy of the Azkaban guards, the Dementors. Driven to the brink of madness, he retained his sanity by focusing on his innocence, which he said in the Shrieking Shack was more an obsession than a happy thought. It could not be detected by the Dementors, but still allowed him to maintain a sense of self-worth and regain enough strength to transform into his Animagus form while within a cell. Since Dementors have difficulty sensing the less complex emotions of animals, Sirius was able to remain relatively unaffected as a dog. 
It was not at all a trouble to the Dementors though, since they thought it meant he was losing his mind like every other convict in their custody, including Bellatrix and some of her fellow Death Eaters. However, his brooding over his friend's deaths and Pettigrew's betrayal became an obsession as well. This was due to hearing many different theories regarding why Harry survived Voldemort's attack being made by the confined Death Eaters, the most persistent of which indicating that they believed Pettigrew to have betrayed them since the Dark Lord met his downfall on Peter's information. This most likely meant that Pettigrew went into hiding as a rat in hopes of avoiding half of Voldemort's followers who avoided imprisonment, afraid that they will be motivated to kill him if his continuing existence became known if not, to return to their master. Sirius waited for a long period of time until word reached him within the prison walls of the discovery that Pettigrew was indeed staying with a wizarding family as a rat in order to keep up on the current news about Voldemort. All the while Sirius was getting very weak with no hope of driving the Dementors back without his wand, which was taken from him and stored away under Ministry of Magic safety repercussions. By 1985, Sirius' mother Walburga had died, leaving the black house elf creature alone in the house, which was thus abandoned. In 1993, Sirius became the first known person to ever escape from Azkaban. After receiving an issue of the Daily Prophet from Cornelius Fudge during an inspection, he discovered that Pettigrew was indeed hiding in his animagus form as Ron Weasley's pet rat Scabbers. Filled with the desire for revenge and concern for Harry, Sirius took his animagus form and, thin from malnourishment, was able to slip through the bars of his cell and passed to the Mentors. He swam across the North Sea, back to the mainland and to freedom. Firstly, he made his way to Little Whinging to catch a glimpse of his godson as a teenager, where his appearance startled Harry before the night bus turned up. As news of Sirius subsequently escaping was released, the wizarding community went on high alert, believing that he plans to kill Harry in a mad attempt to bring back Lord Voldemort. Sirius took refuge around Hogsmeade and the Forbidden Forest, where he was spotted a few times and mistaken by Harry for the Grimm. He made the acquaintance of Hermione Granger's cat Crookshanks, who had recognised that Sirius was not actually a dog, and who had also recognised Peter for what he was. Crookshanks attempted to bring Peter to Sirius, but Ron was very protective of his so-called pet. Half crazed and desperate, Sirius sneaked into Hogwarts through the old passageway from the Shrieking Shack and on one occasion slashed the fat lady's portrait when she refused him entrance to Gryffindor Tower on the 31st of October 1993. Later, he came to view the Quidditch match between Gryffindor and Hufflepuff. During the match, he witnessed Harry's excellent flying skills which he later commented mirrored James's skills. Eventually, he was able to enter the Gryffindor common room. He accomplished this with a list of passwords Crookshanks had stolen from Neville Longbottom and shredded Ron's bed curtains in search for scabbers. Peter was nowhere to be found since Sirius' escape had prompted him to once again fake his own death and go into hiding. In June, Sirius caught Ron carrying scabbers after the rat had been discovered hiding in Rubius Hagrid's cabin and dragged both boy and rat through the tunnel under the Whomping Willow to the Shrieking Shack. Harry and Hermione Granger followed, the former intent on confronting Sirius about the supposed betrayal of his parents. Despite the obvious differences in their ages and skill levels, Sirius' weakened state due to being on the run at that time led to the boy easily and, without a wand, overpowering the older wizard despite Crookshank's attempt to aid the Animagus. Once Harry had Sirius at his mercy, Remus Lupin, who had seen Peter on the confiscated Marauder's map, disarmed Harry and warmly greeted his old friend. Together, Lupin and Sirius revealed Peter's true form. Both wanted to kill their former friend for betraying James and Lily, but Harry prevented them from doing so, believing that it would be better to force Pettigrew to face justice at the hands of the Dementors. That and he did not want his dad's friends to become killers, as he did not think that that would be what his father wanted. As they made their way back to the castle, Sirius hesitantly asked Harry if he would like to live with him, thinking Harry would not want to continue on living with the aunt and uncle that raised him. Harry enthusiastically agreed, thrilled at the idea of leaving the Dursleys and finally having a real home. 
Unfortunately, soon after they left the Whomping Willow, Lupin transformed under the full moon and, having forgotten to take his Wolfsbane potion in the wake of discovering Pettigrew, was uncontrollable. In order to protect Harry, Ron and Hermione from Lupin, Sirius therefore had to turn back into a dog, giving Pettigrew an opening to escape and flee. Sirius was weakened following his encounter with Lupin's werewolf form and could not protect himself when hundreds of the mentors guarding Hogwarts soon arrived. Harry and Hermione had followed Sirius and found him lying unconscious and surrounded by the hooded creatures. He attempted to perform the Patronus charm but to no avail. The Dementors nearly succeeded in sucking out Sirius' soul until a powerful Patronus resembling a stag warded them off. Sirius was briefly recaptured by Snape and sentenced to the Dementors' kiss, a fate considered worse than death. Miraculously and by Albus Dumbledore's suggestion, Harry and Hermione used Hermione's Time Turner to help Sirius escape and Dumbledore also hinted that more than one innocent life could be saved that night. They rescued the Hippogriff Buckbeak from execution, thus granting Sirius a form of travel. Sirius was once again a wanted man, although alive, soul intact and innocence known to at least certain people. Soon after his escape, he sent Harry, Ron and Hermione a letter via a tiny hyperactive owl explaining that it was he who sent Harry the Firebolt for Christmas and giving Harry permission as his godfather to go to Hogsmeade Village. He also apologised to Ron for the loss of his pet, asking him to accept the owl in place of Scabbers. Sirius fled to Europe beyond the Ministry of Magic's jurisdiction. He communicated with Harry, but very seldom, to retain the secrecy of his location. However, due to his use of exotic birds, Harry suspected him of hiding somewhere in the tropics. Harry grew to greatly rely on Sirius's advice in his time of need and Sirius returned to Britain when Harry gave him the notice that his scar had been hurting, which had come to be known as a signal of Lord Voldemort's presence or power. When Harry was mysteriously entered into the Triwizard Tournament, Sirius hid in a cave near Hogsmeade where Harry, Ron and Hermione occasionally visited him and provided mostly moral supports to Harry during this time. He warned Harry about Igor Karkaroff, the Durmstrang headmaster, telling Harry that Karkaroff used to be a Death Eater and that he gave up a considerable amount of names in exchange for his freedom. Harry told Sirius about seeing the name Bartimus Crouch appear on the Marauders map while he was working on the second clue. Sirius admitted that it was strange but told Harry to focus on the task at hand and leave the mystery surrounding Crouch's illness to others. After Harry left to retrieve Dumbledore, Sirius warned Harry that someone did not want Crouch to get to the Headmaster. He advised Harry to continue his practice of defensive spells and to never wander off on his own, as times were dangerous. Following the final task of the tournament, Dumbledore summoned Sirius to his office to meet with Harry who had barely survived an encounter with Lord Voldemort. Sirius wished for Harry to be allowed to rest for his ordeal but was overruled by Dumbledore. As Harry explained the night's events, Sirius nearly interrupted twice and was greatly angered when he learned what his old enemy Wormtail had done to his godson's arm. He also showed signs of strong emotion when he learned that shades of his old friends James and Lily had returned and hid his face in his hands. Sirius was also allowed to stay with Harry in the hospital wing in his dog form, Dumbledore telling Madame Pomfrey that he was very well trained and remained so even as he heard Cornelius Fudge besmirch Harry and question his credibility on Voldemort's return. Once the minister had left, Dumbledore began making plans to resist the Dark Lord. He asked Sirius to resume his human form and make his peace with Severus Snape, although neither was pleased. Sirius also frightened Molly Weasley when she first saw him as she believed him to be a murderer. Dumbledore then requested that Sirius retrieve Remus Lupin, Arabella Fig and Bundungus Fletcher and lie low at Lupin's house until Dumbledore contacted him. With Lord Voldemort restored to his physical form, Dumbledore reinstated the Order of the Phoenix, sending Sirius to gather the old crowd and inform them of the situation. Sirius donated his family home at 12 Grimald Place in London as Order Headquarters. Unfortunately, as he was still wanted by the authorities, Sirius could never safely leave the house and became quite bitter over his perceived uselessness. When he briefly left the house to see Harry to the Hogwarts Express, Draco Malfoy nastily complimented Harry on his pet dog, which, 
coupled with the comments Malfoy made on the train, suggested that the Malfoy family recognised Sirius in his animagus form. Harry and Sirius stayed in touch during Harry's school year via Elves and the Flu Network. Although Sirius' presence was nearly discovered by Dolores Umbridge during her dictatorial managing of Hogwarts that year. Sirius acted as more of a brother than a father figure to Harry throughout his hardships with Umbridge, encouraging him to oppose her reforms and strongly approving of Harry's secret defensive tutorial group for students, Dumbledore's Army. His vigorous support of Dumbledore's army worried Hermione, who thought that Sirius was attempting to live vicariously through them. He also willingly answered all of Harry's questions about the Order and Voldemort, though most of Harry's mentors felt he was too young to handle the burden of the truth. He also urged Harry to contact him if Professor Snape gave him a hard time during their Occlumency lessons. During this time confined to the Order's headquarters, Sirius began to let himself go. When Harry and the Weasleys arrived at Grimald Place, just after Arthur was attacked by Nagini, Sirius was unshaven and still in his day clothes late at night. He also seemed to have taken to drinking. However, he made a complete turnaround when the Weasley family and Harry decided to stay at Grimald Place over the Christmas holidays for its proximity to St Mungo's and at one point was heard singing God rest ye merry hippogriffs at the top of his lungs. Voldemort used legitimacy to implant a false vision into Harry's mind that Sirius was being tortured in the Department of Mysteries, convincing Harry that Sirius had in fact been captured. After giving Severus Snape a cryptic message informing him of the situation and then ditching Umbridge in the Forbidden Forest, Harry, along with Ron, Hermione and fellow DA members Ginny Weasley, Neville Longbottom and Luna Lovegood flew to London via Thestral. The students made their way through the deserted Ministry of Magic and gained access to the Department of Mysteries, only to be ambushed by Death Eaters. It was Snape who ultimately saved their lives by alerting the Order to what Harry had seen. Sirius, Kingsley Shacklebolt, Nymphadora Tonks, Remus Lupin, Alistair Moody and eventually Albus Dumbledore all arrived at the Ministry and began battling the Death Eaters. Tragically however, during a frenzied duel with his hated cousin Bellatrix, Sirius was struck with an unknown spell causing him to fall through the veil which caused his death. The sheer devastation this caused Harry was indescribable. It would be years before he could fully come to terms with the loss of his godfather, who, as Dumbledore flatly stated, was the closest thing Harry ever had to a parent. Harry also blamed himself for the death of Sirius. However, the only comforting positive was the fact that after Voldemort revealed himself to the Ministry officials and the Minister himself, Dumbledore successfully convinced the Ministry that Sirius was in fact innocent all along and managed to get him cleared of all charges posthumously. Black did not get married or have children. As the portrait of Phineas Nigellus, Black's deceased great-great-grandfather stated, the direct line of the ancient Black family ended with Sirius' death. Had Regulus Black lived, he would have been the heir of the Black home. However, he predeceased Sirius. By right of primogenitor then, his heir was either Bellatrix Lestrange, his eldest cousin, but this was legally invalidated by her murder of Sirius. Andromeda Tonks, his second eldest cousin, who was disowned, or Draco Malfoy, the next senior male heir of the Black family through his mother Narcissa Malfoy, previously Narcissa Black. However, their rights were impeded by Black's will, which designated Harry Potter as the sole heir to all his worldly possessions. Thus, by the will, Harry inherited 12 Grimald Place, Buckbeak, Creature and the remaining Black Fortune. Having no great love for 12 Grimald Place, the house that held so many painful memories for Sirius, Harry chose to give it to the Order of the Phoenix for their continued use as headquarters. Creature, forced to serve Harry by Black's will, was sent to work as a Hogwarts house elf in the school kitchens, an imposition which did nothing to improve Creature's hatred of Harry. Buckbeak passed into Rubius Hagrid's care under the assumed name Witherwings. Black was one of the four shadows that were summoned by the Resurrection Stone to speak to Harry as he went to what he believed to be his death on May 2nd, 1998. Black assured his godson that dying was not painful, that it was faster and easier than falling asleep. He also promised Harry that he and the others would stay with him as he went to confront Lord Voldemort and would stay with him to the very end. When Harry reached the fire, he allowed the stone to slip from his hand, thus his parents, Sirius and Lupin vanished. 
Harry later gave his first son the middle name of Sirius to honour his godfather's memory. And James' serious personality was very similar to Black's. Sirius was true-hearted and brave, as shown by his participation in both wars and willingness to die for those he loved. He was particularly loyal to those he cared about. Although he behaved rash and reckless at some points, it was out of pure desire to help. He also seemed to have possessed a superb mental control that contrasted sharply with his passionate and impulsive nature. The fact that he was able to completely resist the psychological effects of the Dementors for so many years suggests that he had an unusually strong sense of self-worth and therefore was capable of withstanding long periods of emotional torture and despair. Just like his younger brother Regulus, Sirius Black gave his life with the hope that one day the Dark Lord would be defeated, something that was never ever forgotten by all. And that is all for today's video everyone, I really hope you enjoyed the life of Sirius Black. It is my longest video I have ever made and it took a very, very long time to edit and create. So I really do hope you appreciate it. Make sure you follow me on Instagram if you want to follow my personal life. You can ask me some questions and I will always get around to replying once I have the time. Make sure to check out some of my other videos on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, check out my second channel Game of Thronelore. Thank you very much again and have a great day.